Hi, everybody. Welcome back to Ari Sinclair. It's been a while. I'm John. And I'm Aaron. And Aaron, today we're going to kick things off with the next run of our Sinclair episodes with a real cracker of a game, Action Biker. Now, Aaron, we've done tons of motorcycle games in the past. We've done tons of bicycle games. This is sort of an in-between game. This is a game that's based really off, of, I guess, a, a low-power motorcycle, a dirt bike, if you will. Did you have any friends growing up, Aaron? I know that you probably didn't have a dirt bike. Did you have any buddies that did? You know, my neighbor had one. You know, dirt bikes, they're, they're more commonplace now than they were uh, back, back when I was a kid. But some of my w kids that had wealthier families did have them. And, uh, I, you know, I, I didn't really even have the notion to try them, frankly, but they did have them uh, mm -hmm. there. And I, they would ride up around their yards and stuff, uh, but they, it wasn't something I was necessarily into. What about you? I know that uh, my 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 mother was always afraid that I would be invited to jump on a dirt bike and ride it around and hurt myself. Uh, so I was always cautioned against uh, riding around on dirt bikes. But I, I do recall that some of my friends, especially the ones that lived out in in the in the country, they would they would ride around the hills on dirt bikes. Now, Aaron, let's talk a little bit about this week's game, Action Biker. Um, had you played this one before? You know. I, I didn't think I had, but I must have because I did. I remembered, especially the uh, when I played this on the uh, C64, I definitely remembered playing it on there. And I think I may have t tinkered with it. They talk about it a lot on the Retro Asylum. I hear it come up quite a bit. And so I, I probably just fiddled with it one day after I heard it on there. But I had, I mean, just had a cup of coffee with it, boot. Mm -hmm. This is a game that I had never played on the ZX Spectrum, but I'd played a ton of on the Atari 8-bit. Uh, oh, this oh, okay. You, so you played quite a bit on there then, eh? Right, right. I, I would say it's probably one of the standout titles on the system itself. And I would put that on the on the C64, too. Um, and so it was interesting for me to see this somewhat different take on the uh, the ZX Spectrum part of it. So, uh, what you, you got any you, need, you got any background info on us on on, on the uh, the ZX Spectrum version here? Well, uh, this thing came out uh, in '85, published by Mastertronic, and this was a budget title, a uh, one pound nine nine p title. Ran on the forty eight k. You had your usual. Uh, uh, choices here you get a good choices for control you know, I wish you could redefine the keyboard but you cannot unfortunately mm -hmm. and the weird thing about this thing is boat this had a tie-in uh with a potato chip or a crisp over there i believe they were uh, it's a prawn flavored crisp does this any of this stuff ring a bell from when you were over there boat you know, I think that Clumsy Con had probably been shoved off to retirement by the time that I was over in England yeah. in, in 2010 or so. But it is funny how many um, how many Collins there are associated with your various crispy snacks. Because if you remember, we we covered that puzzle game that also featured a Colin uh, Curvy or Colin Curly, who is not related to this particular Colin, who is the Clumsy Colin. It's it is strange, and and this the backstory of this game is the stuff of legend. I've got the tape sleeve here. I'm not going to get to the whole thing, but the, listen to this part. Now, you've played the game. Yes. Okay, now listen to this. It says, the aim of the game. Clumsy Colin must find his friend Martini, okay? <laughs> and uh, M -A Or Marty, M-A-R-T-I, my bad. Okay. And take okay. him That's... to, now get this part, and take him to the spaceport. This is not as easy as it sounds, okay? Now, so you got that part. Uh, then, get this. Uh, uh, the alarm is set to go off at 8 o'clock and wake him. He will also wake up if he bumps into any of the vehicles, such as uh, police cars or other bikers. Uh, so, <laughs> I don't know exactly what they're doing in this game, because there's no mention of a spaceport in the game proper, because there's an airport in the game, but mm -hmm. not a spaceport. The whole thing about waking up, I don't know what the hell they're talking about. And I've looked into this and everyone's baffled by what the heck they're talking about. Yeah, I think this is this is a classic example of somebody writing copy for the the cassette liner that had no input 
with the people that were actually making the game. They just thought, hey, this will be a cool story. We'll we'll pretend like, because, you know, it's every kid's dream probably in England to have their own motorbike. It's got to be a dream. So this he's dreaming. You don't want to wake up and, and kill the dream. Um, and then, you know, taking your friend to the airport. Well, that sounds lame. We got to take him to the spaceport. Well, and so, you know, it gradually grew into something that was totally different. Um, and you really didn't need to have all that because on its own, the game works pretty well yeah, as well, the is. The funny thing about that is, Boat, normally I would agree with you. In fact, that's what I thought until I played, played sat there and looked at the game. Sleep is actually in the game. So it's, pr it's not something somebody wrote after the game. It's in the game. Also in the game is an airport, but not a spaceport. And it's called an airport in the game and not a spaceport. So, so there, right. you, so. Yeah, it, it, it is weird. It is like a strange amalgamation of reality and, uh, and, uh, you know, this alternate, this altered state, because you do have a sleep timer that, that ticks down. And if you get, you know, it's basically your hit right. points. If you get hit too many times, then you I, wake I, up. Maybe here's, here's my thought. And this is, I have no ba anything to back this up. The, the chip company that sponsored this game, perhaps they didn't want to be associated with a game where someone got killed. Okay? And so they said, mm -hmm. listen, what mm -hmm. else can you do? And that's when they put the whole sleep thing in there. Maybe that, and for that matter, maybe they said, listen, we want something that's going to have uh, a, a, some kind of futuristic tie-in. So they put the spaceport in there. You never know uh, what Skips was asking for. Because I've heard this plenty of times. Where games didn't want to have, uh, or sponsors didn't want to have games where people were killed or whatnot. So that's just yeah. a theory. I don't know. That's I think it's as good as anything I've heard. Um, this game is a uh, <laughs> let's just say it's wacky. I think this game fits that mold pretty well. So you ride around on your bike, and you're you're vis you're basically going around this large map, including places mm -hmm. that you don't have access to because your bike can't go there. Okay. This map consists of 150 houses, boat, a ton of houses. This It's a very large open yeah. world. And 50 of them actually have items in them, okay? Now, the items are what you need to uh, to complete your quest to get this guy to the airport slash spaceport, okay? Mm -hmm. So, this game, in some ways, it reminds me of a real convoluted version of Blueprint. It even sort of looks oh, like yeah. Blueprint a little bit uh, uh, if you if you if you squint, uh, mm -hmm. and you drive your motorcycle around and you try to, you go into these houses. And I will say, if I was a young person, and we've talked about this before, Boatster, I I was always impressed with games that allowed you to actually go around and explore. And this yes. game uh, does let you do that. You get to drive all over. Uh, and as you augment your bike with parts that you find in various houses, you can uh, you can uh, go different places. For example, if you get the light for your bike, you can go to a dark place. If you get the special tires, go through oil. Yeah, you can get a ge gearbox to let you shift gears. You can get a bigger gas tank. You can get a snorkel to let your bike go underwater. Uh, so there's a lot. Yeah, and and the thing is, is that that's how you when you first uh, you know are exploring the area, you can go lots of places, but there will be places where you physically can't right. progress because you need these different items. So the the game gives you a reason to explore right off the bat. I thought that you know obviously this is a very rudimentary experience, but it is it encourages you to number one, you know, explore this, this little town, you know, number two, it encourages you to, you to equip your bike with all of these different things. And then number three, you know, it, it's, it's a very logical game and that's why it spoke to me. You know, I was, I spent a lot of time thinking about what game should we bring back for our Sinclair in this game. You know, it's a very basic game. At its core, you're basically just piloting your your little motorbike around and you're picking things up. That's all you're doing. But the the way that the logic works in this game, the way that you upgrade your bike, that's what spoke to me. And I'm just like you. Any game where you can actually explore the interior of houses, to me, that's like a mind blowing concept for this period in gaming. Now history. let's let's get into that a little bit more though, because when you say explore the interior, basically just it. <laughs> your guy walks in and a pretty good scene, but then the scene where you're in the house is probably one of the dumber things I've ever seen. The, the yeah, the houses are not. It's well not the house I'm talking about. That. It's the it's the portrayal of your guy, uh, Clumsy well. Colin. He looks like an infant, 
And, and if you've got the <laughs> helmet, he looks like an infinite. He just looks like a, a weird, <laughs> a dumb alien. I've never seen things so stupid in my life. His yeah. portrayal, I mean, yeah. granted, he's clumsy Colin, but my God, he, looks, he just looks stupid. And you do, you run into other people, and the other people are also dressed inexplicably with motorcycle yeah. helmets. Um, it's a weird, it's a weird reality that you're living in. But again, you know, maybe it's just, it's part of that being half asleep, half awake, you know, reality, oh, you're really, you're you're really reality. boosting it up with that. <laughs> uh, we should mention that this is another one of your classic game unfolds on a fourth of the screen affairs. They've got the uh, actual gameplay kind of mushed in the back, basically a, a, maybe a two fifths of the screen. Then you've got, uh, all the right side of the screen has the title of the screen and the bike. And a big old speedometer on it, and then like the there's your uh, information stuff, and at the bottom of the screen is a clock and a fuel gauge. Because yes, you do have fuel in this game as well, and you can go to the petrol station and refuel, and once you get to it, and which that could be a chore as well. You'll also, uh, as you pick up things for your bike, it'll they'll list it on the little bike picture. So as as when I first saw this, I was like, well, that's a waste of space. But once you add stuff to the bike. Uh, it helps. I mean, I, it, you could at least it shows you what you've got if you've forgotten. So I, mm. I can, I'm not going to give them too much trouble for that. And the huge empty space at the bottom of the screen will occasionally have dialogue. So I'll uh, so I'm not going to. And they used every part of the screen for something except for the little title part there. So it could, I've seen worse. Uh, the controls yeah, yeah. on this now, are from the devil. I mean, I, I hated it. <laughs> I hated the controls. Uh, I used the keyboard because uh, I thought it was the best, and it still stunk. But it, yeah, I was not a fan. You, the way that you you pilot your craft is you you basically rotate your bike with two buttons, and then you push forward. You know to 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 go forward. It, it's very awkward, and there is no dexterity required at all with this game. I mean, you are constantly being hit by other bikes. You're constantly running into stuff, and you can't avoid any of it. So what you have to do to complete this game is basically just memorize the route that you can take. It involves you to get hit the least to get the items that you need so you can take your friend to the airport that's that's what it all comes down to when you when you distill it down i think you can beat this game in about four minutes flat if you know exactly what you're doing i didn't know what i was doing well, so i, I yeah, was not have able to, know, to, you have this, to have but... the, everything memorized to do that um uh, it's funny uh because uh um uh, you have to enter and leave the homes and you, you hit the space bar you can go in and out of the homes uh, this is the only, we looked at, actually, we, we took a look at the other versions of this for fun. And the mm -hmm. other ones don't even have the house as part of the, as part of the deal. Uh, well, the, the other games don't even have the same plot. Well, There's, you're it's, right, it's, but I mean, they're, they're, a, they've got the same premise in terms of what you yeah. do. But, uh, this one does give you the house, cause, uh, 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 which the other ones don't. And, uh, there's something very, uh, ZX Spectrum about this game. Not just because, the, it's not just the way it looks. It's just the way it's built. Uh, it it mm -hmm. this somewhat this reminds me of what of what a ZX Spectre game is, boat. You know what I mean? Uh, yeah, yeah. It's got that. It reminds me of Trash yeah, Man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, it's a. Uh, uh, I wish the controls were better. We should mention the obstacles, which are garbage. Uh, mm -hmm. As you drive around town, uh, you will you will just see random cars and trucks uh, driving around and other bikers, and when they touch you. Uh, it starts draining your sleep uh, points from 50 downwards. And when you get to zero, game's over. Uh, these guys are just as random as you can get. And their paths are as random as you can get. Uh, they don't, they aren't going anywhere. This is not GTA. They're not driving no. to the laundromat or the restaurant. <laughs> They're just driving back and forth aimlessly. And <clears throat> you just got to try to avoid them. Well, often you can't, straight up can't avoid them. Uh, and, and, mm. and they're in your way, and you need to get where they're at. And so you just run into them. It's the way it is. Uh, and yeah. I will say that that part of the game is mega, mega rudimentary. Uh, it's just what I would have liked to have seen is I wish that they would have widened these roads just a little bit, giving you some lanes. So you do have the option, at least to avoid yeah. encounters if you're dexterous enough, you know, just give me the option. That's this game, it's funny. Um, uh, Part of me wants to just kill this game, uh, but it is for especially for a, a budget title. It is a very ambitious game in a lot of ways. 
a mm-hmm. huge open world with 150 places to go and 50 places you could go in. The aspect of the collection of stuff is neat. Uh, the uh, uh, the scenery's okay. You know, it's not bad. Uh, but <clears throat> the the premise, the plot, or whatever is stupid. The uh, the fact that it's disjointed is stupid, and the, the obstacles are stupid, and the handling of your bike is crap. So there's a lot. So I, I'm going to call this one sort of a washout boat. Uh, and the fact I will yeah. say the audio on it will make you want to uh, to rip out your eardrums. It's I thought. Did you? What did you think? of <laughs> The, the, the audio is definitely nothing that you're going to want to leave on for any extended period of time. It's basically the sound of your engine. Um, you, you're not going to want to play it. I think this game is worth playing just to kind of take in the scenery, to see this fully realized, uh, you know, suburban environment, yeah. uh, to, to roll around, roll in the houses, see how they're quote unquote decorated, yeah. check out the local inhabitants. Uh, you know, it's not a game that I think you're probably going to want to take the time to complete. Uh, you, you, the, the ending is nothing really to write home about, although the fact that it has an ending, I guess, is, is worth yeah. something. Um, but what you should do is after you check out the ZX Spectrum version, you should check out the accompanying 8-bit computer versions because these are much, much different and kind of interesting in their own way. So I thought maybe we talk a little bit about them uh, towards the end here. Uh, if you're watching the video version, Aaron has pulled up a uh, video of both the Atari 8-bit version and the C64 version. Yeah. And as, as you can see, these are this is a totally different viewpoint. This is a full-on isometric viewpoint. And um, the, the, the action biker game itself is just a different game. Yeah, it is. It's um, almost like you're driving and, around underneath the Mad Max plane. But sort of reminded right. me of. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're right. Um, it's funny because in this game, instead of taking your uh, your friend to the airport, you're actually collecting parts for your bike, and you're going to enter into a race. And so the the the, the game itself actually makes a lot yeah. more sense, I think. And then, um, and the, what you do is you basically roll around this environment. There are all kinds of different obstacles, including a full roller coaster that you can ride. There's a park. There's lots of different uh, other obstacles that you have to maneuver around. There are roads. And you have to find all of these parts of your – there's like the, the, your helmet, your, your – um, there's a code book uh, that tells you the rules of the road. You collect all these things, and once you've collected all the pieces, then you actually go to a drag strip on the course – and race and the in the in the final race and then that's the end of the game. Um, this is a much better game than the ZX Spectrum game because of the isometric viewpoint. Uh, the graphics are much better, but most importantly, this game really controls well. Uh, you can actually, like I said, you can maneuver your bike up on the roller coaster and ride the roller coaster up and down, um, and you really feel like you're doing something real when you're doing it. Um, Aaron, what did you think about the uh, the Atari and the Commodore version of this game? Well... <clears throat> I uh I have played I played the Atari one a while back long ago but I I tried out the C64 version. Uh, the truth of the matter is I I don't think these games are any great shakes either. To be honest with you, really? Yeah. Okay. The reason, okay. One thing I don't like about them is the fact that the, what I would love in these games if you had the hit points uh let your that you do in Action Bike on the Spectrum as opposed to just mm-hmm. insta kill. Uh, I mean, anything yeah. you touch in this game, it's the most deadly world ever. Everything you touch kills you. And you've, only, you've got a finite amount of bikes. I think you have five. Uh, you can't touch anything. You know, dirt bikes that are completely worthless. And so if you if you touch the smart, if your tire touches the front of a fence or a pole or a piece of water, you're screwed. And it just get that mm-hmm. gets infuriating after a while. I would love to have had it where it had hit points, or if you just gave like a little bounce on some of the stuff. I mean, if you're going full speed, I can understand it, but going like as slow. I mean, you could be going as slow as you could conceivably go and touch something, and it kills you. Yeah, it's a very punishing yeah, game, and in that, that ruins it for uh, me to be honest with you. Because I like the app; it looks great. Uh, the, the scenery on both of them look good. They both have little tunes that play. They both have sound that's. Uh, yeah, why don't you fire up that? Why don't you fire up that uh, that Atari okay, tune so here? Okay, so this right here will do is the Atari uh, music. Not bad. Mm-hmm. And you can hear the little thing in the background. 
right now. Yeah, and uh, the the action biker theme, you know, is uh, it's just sort of seared into my memory yeah. for for all the times. Um, I never really played anything like this. I think. I mean, can you think of another game, uh, another you know, eight bit micro game that's quite like? What's action that biker? game we played that we, when you the car racing game that when you crash, your guy would fly the car on fire? Oh, that's John Anderson's Rally Speedway. Yeah, that's. I mean, you get to ride around in that too, as I recall. But it's not a it's not an open world game. Oh yeah, like this, this is, is you know this is not a race. This is this is more like it's like a treasure hunt. No, almost. I agree. The, these give you uh, a lot more freedom uh, than you would normally would normally get uh, on 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 a game on this system, and that's that's part of the fun. Again, for a mm -hmm. budget title, I thought it was a, a that, that part is really impressive. It's just the execution. Yeah. It's funny. I I go back and forth as to which one I prefer. I mean. When you don't wreck, the Atari and Commodore versions are real fun. But I just hate the way you get hit. You you get cr killed so much. And I do like the aspect of being able to get off your bike and go in a house on the Spectrum version. I mean, mm -hmm. oh, yes, graphically, the Spectrum version, of course, is gonna not going to hold up uh, and sound-wise. But I think it's clever. Like I said, it's 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 very, like, if this, would have been, if this game would have been on the Commodore or Atari, it wouldn't have felt right. But on the on the spectrum, it does feel right for whatever reason. It fits right in, and so I yeah. I, I kind of dig it. I actually, I, if you if you want the truth, I played the spectrum version more. But with that said, the spectrum version, the controls are just the I hate them. I hate, and also just the the gameplay isn't as fun. If you could turn off mm -hmm. the enemy cars and just drive around and find the puzzle pieces, you know, in the allotted time, that would probably be more fun. But I really it did, it did it, neither one of these games, neither one of these versions. Or something I'd want to go play again and again, <laughs> but for hey, yeah. for a budget, yeah. you can't beat it. I will say that. Cool. Now you didn't look up. There were. Did you find any reviews for this game anywhere? Uh, I think I did. Let me have a quick look here. I uh, 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 the the Spectrum version did not review well. Uh, in mm. fact, it was it, it it was not nearly as uh, uh, popular as the other two. And uh, Sinclair user wrote that the uh, uh, mentioned that the the opening was very stupid, and, and which was <laughs> which was true. Uh, uh, I will say Zap sixty four gave the sixty four version eighty three percent. So I had those two. Uh, so which you know, if I was going to rate these, you know, we've played a play, we've played a decent amount of Spectrum games now. Yeah, sixty five. This is nowhere. I mean, this is a playable game. Okay, so there's no doubt about that. Would I give this an A or a B? You know, the the thing is, part of me wants to give this a high grade just because of the ambition, but the execution mm -hmm. not so good. So I would say I would put this somewhere in my C zone or average. But I mean, I think it's a game that if uh, this game could be redone, uh, hey, here's your next title right here, boat. Uh, you, yeah. they could. I'd love to see a ZX Spectrum version, a next version of. And of I Action think this game's sure. sort of a, a punchline. To some people, you know, because the other versions were mm -hmm. better or whatever. I think this could be a fun game if someone took the time to make the controls tighter and probably punch up the overall the obstacles a little bit. I don't even mind the random obstacles, but I mean, I just hate the way they look and the way they move, and and they don't they, they I just I don't like that. So I'd like to see that punched yeah. up a little bit. What about you? you I guess you like the Atari version the most, then, eh? Yeah, the Atari version is definitely my favorite. Um, it's a nostalgic pick. Uh, I love the exploration, the atmosphere, and all that stuff. But there's, like you said, man, there's something about the way this game feels at home on the ZX Spectrum. The way that it's drawn, the open worldness of it, the just sort of kooky atmosphere, the wacky story. Um, I think you're definitely onto something with having somebody redesign this thing for the next. That's the yeah, way to go. Yeah, hey, they are. Uh... They're always angling to see what to do. You know, that's my thing when it comes to these new consoles and what or new computers and stuff. If you're going to go back and touch on the classics, listen, there are plenty of games on on these systems that just need a little menu work or uh, some mm -hmm. adjustments. You know, I would do it. I would give this one a do over, but you could keep the concept uh, and and yeah. uh, or what you know what might be interesting, Bo, is to take the Atari or C64 versions and sort of port that exact game over to the the next. You know, since they don't have that game, it would make sense. Or maybe something in the middle of those two would be fun. Well, I think, you know, the concept of Action Biker is sound. You know, you're trying to build up your bike so you can take your buddy to, you know, 
all you have to do is, you know, you could even make it a little bit more iterative. You could say, you know, uh, you need to do these amount of tasks, say there's like five or six tasks. Okay. And they're randomly generated. So each game, it's a different game. Like say you've got to get the, uh, you've got to get the helmet, you've got to get the light and you've got to get the snorkel. Uh, those are the three that you have to do for this game. And they're hidden in random places around the map. You know, each time you load it up, make, make it procedurally generated. There are ways that you can make this game interesting and give it tons of replay value without really having to change the code yeah it's not a bad idea boaster i like it man get on it all right <laughs> <laughs> so um anyway we hope you guys have enjoyed this return to our sinclair we're uh we're gonna we're gonna be doing these uh every once in a while as the mood strikes us uh we definitely have not given up on our beloved uh 48k specky uh we will be back with more episodes soon and uh we just thought it was time we thought it was time to come back so um we hope you enjoyed the show and as always if you have any feedback feel free to let us know uh feedback at arsonclair.com or you can just let us know on the discord um if you do enjoy arsonclair and you want to support us just in general you can support the amigos retro gaming patreon page patreon.com slash amigos podcast uh, that helps all of our shows, our Sinclair, Amigos, The Coco Show, all of the stuff that we do. Um, but for now, we will bid you a fond farewell and say once again, until then, rewind tape. And press play.